Hi everyone, this is Mix from Seeks and Ball PH, and today we have a detailed review on the Nike Giannis Immortality. To start things off, if you do like the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Then if you have any comments, questions, or any suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below as well. Then I'll also make sure to leave a link to the SNBPH Sneaker Hunters Facebook group in the description box because that is a place where we talk about sneakers and basketball quite a bit. And it's also where I have the SNBPH Steel Cabinet where I take some shoes that I no longer use or some shoes that I recently reviewed and put them up for bidding at way below market value. Then if you haven't already, I do hope you can sub to the channel because it really does help us out quite a lot. Then I'd also like to give a quick shout out to On The Net Clothing as well as The Hustle Club for the shirt that I am wearing which is an Allen Iverson t-shirt and I also got their Allen and Iverson shorts to pair along with the shirt. The shirt and the shorts are just really well made. I mean, the quality of the shirt is amazing and the overall design is just so dope. So I do hope that you can check them out, especially if you want to get some super dope NBA inspired shirts and shorts. Then with that out of the way, let's take a look at the Nike Giannis Immortality. The Nike Giannis Immortality is basically Giannis Antetokounmpo's like budget signature shoe, which is something that Nike has been doing with a lot of its signature athletes. I mean, Kyrie has his main flagship signature shoe, but he also has the budget Kyrie Flytrap. Kobe as well did have his signature line, and then he had his Mamba Mentality series, which were more budget friendly. KD also has the flagship signature, and then he has the budget KD35. And with LeBron, he does have his super expensive signature shoes. Then he has the more affordable LeBron Soldier line. He also does have even cheaper options with the Witness line, as well as the Ambassador line in China. So I guess Giannis having his own budget shoe offering came at no surprise because it is just something that Nike does to sort of maximize their profits with their signature athlete. It is a bit weird though that Giannis has his own budget shoe because his signature shoe, the Zoom Freak 3, is actually quite affordable and definitely nowhere near the price of the KDs or the LeBrons. On the positive side though, since the shoe is just $80 or around 4,000 pesos, it gives people a lot more options especially if they don't want to spend too much on a pair of basketball shoes. It also does have a lot of that Giannis branding from his name to his logos and that is one more thing that makes this shoe more appealing because you know if you are a big Giannis fan but you can't afford the Zoom Freak 3, this could be the best option. Historically though it has been a bit hit or miss with these budget shoes or these takedown models but there were also quite a few really good ones like off the top of my head I can remember really liking the LeBron Witness 4. The KD356 I think was another one that I really like and even though the Kyrie fly traps weren't exactly my cup of tea they were also very popular and loved by a lot of people. So to find out if I think this is a hit like the LeBron Witness 4 or if it's one of those misses, let's take a look at the tech specs. So starting off with the traction, the Nike Giannis Immortality has a tried and true herringbone outsole and it is just pure herringbone from the forefoot to the heel and it also makes use of solid rubber. There really isn't anything out of the ordinary with the outsole, I mean herringbone has been around for a really long time but I think that is a good thing because herringbone just works well, I mean I just tried these out here at home and it does grip really well. The rubber also seems pretty hard and you do have a lot of tread on the shoe so it's probably gonna be above average in terms of the durability. So for the traction, I think it is very promising because they used a tried and true pattern and they also didn't play around with any translucent rubber or any clear rubber and just made it a nice and grippy solid rubber. Then moving on to the cushion, the Nike Giannis Immortality just has a full length Phylon midsole but it does have some cord out sections that really help that Phylon foam compress. Phylon is a pretty basic foam cushion, but the good thing is that the Giannis Immortality seems like it has injected Phylon, which does actually kind of make it feel pretty soft. And with those holes in the foam, it does give you a little bit more of a bouncy sensation and just a tiny bit of underfoot plushness. Definitely isn't gonna be anything mind blowing. I mean, it's not React, it's not Renew, it doesn't have any zoom whether on the heel or on the forefoot, but it is pretty comfy for what it is and also pretty lightweight. So if you are a guard or a wing that's really shifty and likes being pretty low to the ground, but still wants good impact protection and a a little bit of plushness, then I think this cushion setup would be pretty good for you. So overall the cushion is pretty basic but it is surprisingly comfy for what it is. Then for the materials they are on the cheap side but this really is a theme with most of the budget shoes from Nike or their takedown signature models because you know if you are a company that sells a lot of $120 shoes, $150 or $200 shoes, you're gonna have to do some cost cutting somewhere if you're gonna offer a shoe for $80 and with most of them the place where they cheap out the most is with the materials. So for the materials on the Giannis Immortality 
quality. For the front half of the shoe, you do have this pretty thin and pretty cheap feeling textile. And it's kind of hard to describe how it feels because on one hand, it's kind of cheap in hand. And it also does have this kind of weird fuzzy feeling. But on the other hand, it also does feel pretty soft and kind of fits well around your foot. So that's definitely a positive in terms of the materials. Then for the back half of the shoe, you do have neoprene and it actually is pretty padded. However, the mesh liner here at the back is a little bit rough at first. So you might feel a little bit of discomfort on your first wears. But the more that you wear the shoe, it should break in nicely so it would fit and feel a lot more plush. Then for the tongue, you just have some open celled mesh here at the throat. And then here at the top, you have some vinyl. You also do have a few pieces of fuse, mostly here at the eye stay area. And then you have some more here at the midfoot and on the Nike swoosh, as well as here on the medial side of the toe that will protect the material from toe drags. The materials overall are pretty decent, especially for the price, because on one end, they do feel a little cheap in hand and they also seem pretty thin, so I don't think support and durability will be the best. But on the positive side, the materials are nice and light. They're also pretty breathable and they're also surprisingly soft. Then for fit and sizing, I did go through the size and it fits me perfectly well. I did go with my standard size 10 and there really isn't any dead space anywhere on the shoe. The only issue would be if you have a slightly wider foot because as you can see from the shoe, it is pretty narrow. So it would definitely be pretty tight for a wide footer. So for my recommendation on the sizing, if you have a narrow foot or a normal width foot, go through the size. Then if you have a wide foot or even if you have a slightly wide foot, I would recommend that you go up half a size because the shoe, like I said, is pretty narrow. Then for the aesthetic details on the shoe, there really isn't much going on, especially in this black and white colorway. And honestly, I really wish I could have gotten the other colorways like that white and gold one, which I think looks pretty dope. But this was the only colorway available in the Philippines at the time. So I just had to kind of roll with this. So you know, it is what it is. I could always just kind of give these or put these up on the steel cabinet and then get myself another colorway when they come out here in the Philippines. For the aesthetic details though, here on the outsole, you do have a mix of black and white. And then you have some minor details here on the outsole, like the names of his family members, like Charles and Veronica, who are his parents. You have his brothers, Francis, Tanasis, Costas, and Alex. And then you also have Liam, who is his son. Then moving on to the midsole, I think this is the most jarring or striking part of the shoe, because you do have a white file on midsole, but here at the back, you do have this sort of squiggly line. And with that squiggly line, you do have some of the outsole that comes up, and it does give it such a unique look. But honestly, for me, I'm not really much of a fan, because I have to admit, at least for me personally, it just looks pretty strange. You also have the outsole and midsole kind of curling up here at the back which does make the shoe have a little bit of a ledge here at the heel and it doesn't really do much to make the shoe feel clunky because it does still feel pretty light but it definitely might be an issue if someone steps on this while you're in game so I guess you just have to watch out for that. On that sort of file on ledge though you do have Athens which is where Giannis was born and on the right shoe you have Lagos which is a city in Nigeria where his parents were from. Then moving on to the upper with this particular colorway it is all black but you do have a white Nike swoosh with a transparent window on there as well. That transparent window does show this sort of support piece that's underneath and with this colorway that underlay material is this neon green so it definitely adds a pop of color. Then for the other details on the shoe you do have a reverse Nike swoosh here on the medial side, a number 34 here on the base of the lacing, you also have black and white laces, you have a stitched in Yanis logo here on the tongue and Yanis and Tetokumpu written here on the top. Then for the last aesthetic detail you do have this grey pull tab which has those Yanis logos as well. Then for the overall aesthetics I just have to be pretty honest I don't like how the shoe looks and it's mostly because of that midfoot shape I mean that squiggly line as well as that sort of back spoiler and I'm also not a fan of that transparent window here on the swoosh it is a pretty sleek looking shoe though so I think that's a plus but overall it just really isn't my cup of tea especially in this colorway I think I would like that white black and gold championship colorway a lot more or even that other upcoming colorway which did have those blue box colors but even then I still think I would be bothered by that midsole shape but that is just my personal opinion and I definitely think that there are some people that like the way the shoe looks. So if you're one of those people that really want to rock these and think that they look nice, then just go for it because you know everyone has different preferences and different tastes. So even if I don't like the looks of the shoe personally, other people definitely might love them. Then for the price, the Nike Giannis Immortality retails for 3,995 pesos here in the Philippines or 80 US dollars. This is a pretty affordable shoe, especially for a shoe with Giannis's name on it. And I think it does have a lot of things going for it because not only does it have a really cheap price of $80, but you also have some really good traction, adequately comfy cushion, and a soft and lightweight upper. But just like I said a while ago, I did find it strange that Giannis had a budget shoe because his signature shoe is also not that expensive. So since the Giannis Immortality is $80 and the Zoom Freak 3 is $120, here's at least how I would recommend or break it down. If you do have the $120 to spend, I would definitely go for the Zoom Freak 3. And if you have a $100 budget, I would still recommend that you 
gonna try and look for vouchers or wait for sales on the Zoom Freak 3, but if you just really had $80 to spend on a shoe, I think this would be a solid option. I did get my pair over at the Nike app so you can get it over there as well as the Nike website and it actually arrived at my doorstep pretty fast so I definitely would recommend ordering from there. So there you have it guys, that's my detailed review on the Nike Giannis Immortality. Once again, if you liked the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Then if you haven't already yet, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon for notifications. It would help us out a lot here at Sneaks and Ball PH.